This week, we are focusing on common misspelled words and using better vocabulary to help students improve their writing skills. The goal is to expand children's vocabulary in writing so they can produce a better text. Word number one is Egypt. The noun Egypt is a site of an ancient civilization ruled by a pharaoh. It is centered on the Nile River in northeastern Africa. If you go to Egypt, you will see the ancient pyramids and mummies. Don't forget the letter Y in Egypt. Word number two is crocodile. A crocodile is a vicious aquatic reptile with a long snout, massive jaws, sharp teeth, and a body covered with bony plates. A crocodile is very dangerous. You do not want to swim in the same lake as a crocodile. Word number three is alligator. An alligator is related to a crocodile but with shorter, broader snouts. An alligator is equally dangerous as a crocodile. Alligators love marshmallows and naturalists often use them to lure the animals out of swamps. You can see the word or in the word alligator. Don't forget the word alligator ends with O-R, not E-R. Word number four is swamp. The word swamp can be both a noun and a verb. As a noun, a swamp is a lowland that is flooded with woody plants. For example, lakes, rivers and swamps are scattered throughout the national park. As a verb, swamp means flood with water or too much. For example, teachers sometimes will swamp their students with lots of homework, especially when exams are approaching. Word number five is mangrove. A mangrove is a tree or shrub which grows in tropical coastal swamps. Mangrove swamps are common on the coasts. Break the word up to help you remember the spelling. Man, grove. Word number six is bank. The word bank has several meanings. Firstly, as a noun, a bank is a place where you deposit or withdraw money. For example, mum needs to visit the bank when she has no money in her wallet. Secondly, the noun bank is the side of a river or lake. For example, the river flowed over the bank after the storm. Thirdly, as a verb, bank means to pile up. For example, the rain banked the soil up behind the gate. Fourthly, the verb bank also means tilt. For example, the experienced pilot taught the boy how to bank the plane. Remember these four different meanings and how they are used in a sentence. Word number seven is pharmacy. Another word for pharmacy is chemist. It is a store where you can buy medicine. For example, I'm so glad the pharmacy is opened until late at night when my sister Macy is sick with a high temperature. Remember the word pharmacy is spelled with P-H, not F. Can you see Macy in pharmacy? Word number eight is lullaby. A lullaby is a quiet song that puts a child to sleep. For example, my mom always sings a lullaby to my baby brother before he goes to bed. The word lullaby contains the word lull, which means send to sleep with soothing sounds. If you cut the letter B in baby out, and combines A, B, Y, 
with love, it makes lullaby. Word number nine is lyrebird. A lyrebird is a large Australian songbird. A lyrebird is most notable for their ability to copy natural and artificial sounds from the environment. A male lyrebird is very pretty, especially its tail. Word number 10 is league. A league is an association of sports teams that organises matches for its members. For example, my dad loves watching rugby league as it's his favourite sport. Don't forget the letter U in the word league. Word number 11 is museum. A museum is a building in which objects of historical, scientific, artistic or cultural interest are stored and displayed to the public. The Australian Museum is the oldest museum in Australia. You should visit the Australian Museum when you get a chance. Word number 12 is hyperbole. A hyperbole is an exaggeration which cannot be taken literally. For example, my mum is going to kill me if I don't clean my room. In this case, the exaggeration is used on the action of my mum. My mum will not kill me literally if I don't clean my room. It means I will get into big trouble for not cleaning my room. This language is called hyperbole. Do not pronounce this word as hyperbole. Word number 13 is eucalyptus. The noun eucalyptus is a type of tree which can be found in Australia. It is valued for its timber, oil, gum, resin and as an ornament tree. Koalas eat eucalyptus leaves. Break the word up to help you remember the spelling. Eucalyptus. Don't forget the letter Y. Word number 14 is martial. The adjective martial is related to fighting or war. For example, Naginata is one of Japan's traditional martial arts. Do not spell this martial as M-A-R-S-H-A-L. Marshal with S-H-A-L is a high-ranking officer in the army. Both words are homophones. Word number 15 is nuisance. The noun nuisance is a person or thing that is very annoying and can cause trouble. For example, the ants in the kitchen are causing a nuisance and I am going insane. If you swap the letters around, you can form the word insane from the word nuisance. Don't forget the letter I in nuisance. Word number 16 is obviously. Another word for obviously is clearly. For example, diet and exercise are obviously important. The letter B is a silent sound in the word obviously. Word number 17 is oscillate. The verb oscillate means to move or swing from side to side. For example, the pendulum oscillated side to side, making it difficult to concentrate on other objects. Don't forget the letter C in the word oscillate. Word number 18 is pedestal. A pedestal is the base of something. For example, a flower arrangement in a large basket stood on a pedestal in the corner of the room. You can see the word pedal in the word pedestal. 
Word number nineteen is saxophone. A saxophone is a member of a family of metal wind instruments with a reed like that of a clarinet, used especially in jazz and dance music. Do not spell saxophone as S A X A P H O N E. Remember, there's two O's. Word number twenty is overheard. The word overheard is the past tense of overhear. It means you hear something without the other person knowing. For example, I overheard my brother's secret when I walked past his room. The word overheard is a compound word. You can break the word up into over. And heard. Word number twenty-one is alliteration. An alliteration is the repeating of the same consonant at the beginning of the words in a sentence. For example, lazy lizards lying like lumps. You can see here that the words all start with the letter L in this sentence. This is called alliteration. Word number twenty-two is wonderful. The adjective wonderful means very good. For example, the rooms were filled with wonderful works of art. Remember, there is only one L in the word wonderful. Word number twenty-three is successful. The adjective successful. Means accomplishing a desired aim. For example, the fundraising was very successful, and we donated a lot of money to charity. Remember, there are double C and double S in the word successful. Word number twenty-four is punctual. The adjective punctual means doing something at the agreed time. For example, the cat makes a punctual appearance at meal times. Word number twenty-five is sewage. Sewage is the waste water that is produced from a community of people. It contains dirty water from toilets, sinks, tubs, showers, dishwashers, and anything we flush away. If we don't treat sewage, it will become water pollution. Word number twenty-six is sparkling. The adjective sparkling means shining brightly. For example, I love drinking sparkling wines. You can also say the sparkling stars are flickering in the cosmic universe. Word number twenty-seven. Is reluctant. The adjective reluctant means not eager. For example, the girl was reluctant to eat her dinner because she wasn't feeling well. Don't forget the letter C. Word number twenty-eight is fireside. The noun fireside is the area around a fireplace in your home. For example, a cat dozed in the chair by the fireside. The word fireside is a compound word. You can see the words fire and side. Word number twenty-nine is lieutenant. A lieutenant is the second in command. It is normally a high-ranking police or military officer. For example. The lieutenant stood ahead of the troops, getting ready to charge at the enemies. Break this word up to help you remember the spelling. Lie, you, ten, ant, to pronounce the word lieutenant. Word number thirty is orientation. The noun orientation has different meanings. Firstly. An orientation of a narrative 
is the introduction. For example, the orientation of a narrative consists of who, what, when, where, and why. Secondly, orientation means location or positioning of something. For example, the scientist used the orientation of a building to capture energy from the sun. This brings to the end of our spelling list 13b. Keep practicing and good luck in your spelling test.